Que la que mi gente, bienvenido a H's Prime Gaming, mi nombre es Alex And today vamos a estar hablando de la noticia de videojuegos de esta semana um, So yeah, then, you know, let's dive right into that shit Now let's begin with Atomic Heart Muntfish is reportedly planning to work on a sequel to its first person shooter, Atomic Heart, in the future According to journalist and blogger Alexei Makaranekov I'm sorry if I butchered that The Atomic Heart developer, Munfish, is already planning to working on a sequel for the first-person shooter. He asked the developer three questions, one of which was regarding a potential Atomic Heart 2. And the studio is also working on DLC for Atomic Heart. So that's great news for people that loved Atomic Heart. Unfortunately, I still haven't given it a shot. But hey, DLC for the game and a sequel? Sounds great to me. Microsoft keeps appearing in the news lately, a bunch of times this week, and they just did two major deals this week. Let's begin with the first one, that they have signed a 10-year deal to take its PC games to Boosteroid. Boosteroid is an independent cloud game provider, and they are based in the Ukraine. This deal obviously means that they will be receiving Activision Blizzard titles such as Call of Duty, Xbox Game Pass games, you know, all the good stuff for Microsoft. If Microsoft gets to buy Activision Blizzard, that is obviously the criteria that needs to happen in order for this to work. Obviously, this follows a similar agreement in which NVIDIA's got the same treatment, you know, for their GeForce Now and also Nintendo. Boosteroid has over 4 million users globally, which means that they'll just be adding even more users to that user base and they'll just keep getting bigger. And Microsoft has signed a fourth deal with a company called Ubitus, which is a white label cloud gaming server that helps many publishers stream their games, for example, to the Nintendo Switch. The latest deal comes just a day after, like I mentioned, that Microsoft announced the Boosteroid deal. And it's exactly, basically the same thing. Getting Xbox, PC games, Activision Blizzard games to cloud, to other companies. Next up, we have, I guess, more Microsoft news, sort of. Tango Gameworks Supernatural Action Packed Adventure. Ghostwire Tokyo is coming to the Xbox Series X and Game Pass subscription on the 12th of April. The publisher Bethesda announced on Wednesday. This will also be coinciding with the release date for a free update of the original game on PS5 and PC, The Spider's Thread. This new update will add new locations throughout Tokyo, new missions, and additional mysteries to solve. The game's core storyline will also be updated with extended cutscenes, granting players a deeper look into the plot. The free update will also include the Spider's Thread game mode, which is described as a 30-stage gauntlet selected from over 120 handcrafted levels with one simple goal, to get to the end. In the vaguely roguelike sounding mode, players will unlock skills as they play and earn in-game currency to spend on upgrades. This update this spider's thread will also be coming to the xbox and pc ubisoft in honor of far cry 5's fifth anniversary ubisoft will be giving it a free 60 fps update for the xbox series x and s and ps5 this update which is available right now and you can just download it applies to all far cry 5's modes This will be, you know, the game's solo campaign, co-op mode, the arcade, and all DLC. In addition to this 60 FPS boost, Ubisoft will be hosting a free weekend for Far Cry 5. This weekend will run between March 23rd and 27th across all platforms. And if you decide that you liked it and you want to buy the game, you will be able to get an 85% off. Which is great, so you can continue your journey. And to wrap this up, we have Nintendo in the news, and I don't think I agree with them, but whatever. Uh, the next big Zelda game that you all know is Tears of the Kingdom, is 
the first Nintendo game that will be launching at the $70 price tag instead of the usual $60 that usually all games sell for. But not anymore, bitches. In an interview with Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser, he explained that the sequel to Breath of the Wild will be justified by the immersiveness of the game and blah, blah, blah. This is what he had to say. We look at what the game has to offer. I think fans will find this an incredibly full, deeply immersive experience. The price point reflects the type of experience that fans can expect when it comes to playing this particular game. It's actually a fairly common pricing model, at, pricing model either here or in Europe or in other parts of the world where the pricing may vary depending on the game itself. That's what he said, Doug Bowser. $70 first party games won't be the new standard for Nintendo going forward. They have said that they will examine the retail price of its titles on a case by case basis. Now, I still say that $70 is way too much for a game. 60 is like the sweet spot, even though even that I'm not even willing to pay for it. But $70 for a Nintendo Switch game, eh, I don't think so. But we all know Nintendo, and even if you don't buy it at $70, you will still have to buy it at $70 because they never go down in price. So we're screwed. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us this week. My name's Alex, and don't forget to subscribe, you know? Subscribe, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Do it now. Thank you. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.